Doctor, how long does chemo brain last and can the brain ever return to its fully function uh, ability before the patient was ever diagnosed with uh, cancer and, and went through chemo? Question, and I think it's a question that we still have not fully answered. So the results that we are having right now from clinical trials are suggesting that during the chemotherapy, every cycle of chemotherapy brings more and more cognitive problems. Mm -hmm. And then the studies that are following on that show that months and even years, the effects are getting less and less and the patients are getting better and better. But I don't think that we have the final data to suggest that we know when they stop. In a slightly different uh, environment, the environment of people getting high-dose chemotherapy in order to prepare them for transplant, mm -hmm. we have data at five years and 10 years showing that the patients that got the high dose of drugs for the transplant were still having some mild cognitive deficits even 10 years after the transplant. Right. So the questions then become, Lisa's question is a natural one, because Lisa, you and I talk about and joke about this all the time. Besides being a beautiful blonde, having a blonde moment, you say I'm probably having a chemotherapy moment. Yeah, right? yeah. My chemo fog. Here it comes. Here's the chemo brain. Yeah. And then Lisa, why don't you just share with our audience the things you've noticed in yourself? I think that would be really helpful. Well, one of the things like the, the doctor had mentioned is as, as I went through, I did six rounds of chemo every three weeks. So I went for about 18 weeks and I really started to notice a lot of the changes, not so much after the first or second, but by the time I went to that third uh, round of treatment was when things kind of started to kick into high gear, the for forgetfulness, the, uh, the lack of focus, you know, staring at a calendar and what was I going to write here, uh, picking up the phone, who was I going to call, and um, and I'm about three years out now, and I feel like things are slowly bouncing back, but I still have my, as Dr. Harness, my, you know, my, my blonde moments, my, my chemo brain moments, and um, that's why I wanted to know, you know, how long it lasts, and does the brain fully, you know, come back around to function the way it was prior to these drugs coming into our system. So that was that's my story in a nutshell. Okay. Daniela, what do you think? I think that the brain has the ability to fully come back, especially on younger patients such as Lisa. Okay. It's a slightly different question in older patients, and this is a question of the ability of the brain to repair. What we find in the lab is that you get damage to two types of cells. You get damage to the neural stem cells, which are the most young, immature cells of the brain, which have the ability in a way to become whatever they want to be. <laughs> but we also see damage to the mature synaptic neurons. So what the long travel is, is to make more of the young cells, because you kill a lot of them with chemotherapy, and those young cells to be trained and go back and replace the mature cells that are dying back mm -hmm. because of the chemotherapy. So this is a very long process. How can we encourage that that moves back about what can we do to prevent and what can we do right. to improve the quality right. of life and make it shorter? Well, exactly. And just to explain to our audience, you and I know what synapses are, mm -hmm. okay? But the lay people may not. It's basically when two nerve cells have a little junction point, usually there's a neurotransmitter that goes across that point, right? That yes to connect one to the other. So it's sort of where the wires in the brain are coming together and there's a little chemical release right at the mm -hmm. end that sort of jumps the gap. Is that a fair layperson's lay analogy? It is a very good analogy and it expresses that feeling that maybe Lisa can relate to and what she was telling about. You sit in front of the calendar, the memory is there that you need to do something yeah, but you like don't have the wiring to actually bring it to your attention, what do you actually need to do? Mm -hmm. So you have the information, but the wiring doesn't allow you to transmit it. And recreating those transmissions is, is what healing and repair is about. Hi, I'm Dr. Jay Harness, and I want to share with you important information that I believe that every newly diagnosed patient with breast cancer needs to know. I'm a breast cancer survivor. 
I am a breast cancer survivor. I am a breast cancer survivor. And I want every woman to know about personalized breast cancer treatment and the genomic test. A test that helps guide a woman and her doctor to the best treatment options for her. Pass it on.